Great job. Thank you, praise team. Appreciate what God has done. Thank you, musicians. Thank you to our greeters, to our ushers. Thank you to our sound crew. Thank you to our uh, ministry leaders, our, our preachers, our deacons, our deaconess. Thank God for all of you in in-person worship, as well as all of you who are watching by way of internet. We give God all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor for all that he's done, what he's doing right now, and what he promises he will continue to do in our hearts and in our lives. We give him praise, we give him glory, and we give him honor. Well, evidently, I hit a nerve on last week's sermon. Normally, every, evidently, I hit a lot of nerves on last week's sermon. Every week after Sunday service, after the sermon, I get either phone calls or uh, emails or text messages from certain individuals. Almost every week, just pass. I'm blessed by the message, and uh, thank you for this. You challenged me. Uh, but last week, I got an um, abundant number of, uh, ser of text messages and emails uh, because of the message we preached on how to overcome betrayal. Uh, one of the emails when I mentioned about the fact that God said vengeance is mine, she said, well, Pastor, I ain't there yet. She said, uh, I'll let God handle them after I get to them. And she was just being honest. A lot of us could identify with that. And so because of all the things that had happened on last week, many of us can identify with betrayal. Our football team has betrayed us, y'all. I think this year is over, Anthony. I think this year is over. Uh, you know, we had, had great hopes, Janelle, for this year. Our offense has let us down. Our defense has let us down. Our coaches have let us down. Betrayal is real in our lives. So this morning, I want to go back to the same text, to the same scripture. Romans chapter 12. Verses 17 through 21. Dr. Johnson, it doesn't happen like this every week, but every now and then, uh, a text just won't let me go, and I got to go back and deal with it again. And based on all of the texts and emails, and phone calls that I've gotten as a result, and this really was a follow-up to Elizabeth's message on Women's Day when she talked about true love and how to love those who let you down, how to love those who betray you. And on last week, we looked at Romans 12, verses 17 to 21, from a sermon entitled, How to Overcome Betrayal. This morning, we want to look at that same passage of Scripture. And by the way, if you are not here, you can check it out on, uh, on our YouTube channel our Facebook channel, and also our multimedia is still producing um, CDs and DVDs for those of you who would like to get them after the service, just right behind this wall here. Uh, if you want to go back and hear that message on last week. If you have it, please say amen. Multimedia will have it up on the screen in just a moment. For those watching at home, for those watching on the TV, on your iPad, on your internet. The Apostle Paul is writing to the church, Brother Green, at Rome. And he shared with them his concerns about how we as the church, Brother Philip, handle Brother Creighton certain things in our lives. So here in Romans chapter 12, Sister Gladys, Howard Kimberly listened to the Apostle Paul, beginning at verse 17. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peacefully with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For the Bible says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. I think that was the Southern fans, that scripture right there. Verse 20, 
Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing you, he calls a fire on his head. And D1, he closes out in verse 21 that by saying, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil, Damon and Kim, with good. Father, we're so grateful for this worship service. Thank you for our youth and young adult praise team. Thank you for our musicians. They're very consistent in blessing us in song every fourth Sunday. Thank you for the gift that you've given them in song. Thank you for the verses that you blessed them with and the talents of the musicians. God, thank you for everyone in this in-person worship service. Although it was raining on the outside, God, thank you for allowing us to push our way to the house of God. Thank you for all those who are watching by way of internet, whether it's YouTube or Facebook or our church website. Thank you for all of the members, all of the guests, and everyone that's tuning in from all over this country. Now, God, as always, hide me behind the cross. God, let them not see Fred, but God, let them see Christ. So then, God, that you may be glorified, the saints of God may be edified, Satan may be horrified, and lost sinners will come to repentance. Therefore, God, stand in my body, think with my mind, and speak with my voice as I once again deal with the topic of betrayal. God, you and only you can make this happen in all of our lives. Of ourselves, it cannot be done. So God, do what you have assigned me to do. Let me decrease as you increase. In Jesus' name I pray. And for us, again, the people of God say, amen. And if it is possible, as much depends on you, live peacefully with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. On last Sunday, we used the same text and we preached from the sermon, How to Overcome Betrayal. Some of you have already guessed it. Today, we want to talk about How to Overcome Betrayal, part two. How to Overcome Betrayal, part two. Kathy, in last week's sermon, we established the fact that all of us, no matter your age, established the fact Remind that all of us, no matter your gender, Brother Rogers, Sister Rogers, we established the fact that all of us, Patterson, no matter your race, we established the fact that all of us, no matter your relationship status, no matter your educational status, no matter your economic status, no matter your spiritual status, that all of us, whether you ride an elephant or ride a donkey, the fact of the matter is that all of us, no matter if you're a drag, jaguar from southern or a tiger from Grambling, all of us, Jerry, all of us, all of us uh, have been uh, betrayed. The fact of the matter is, if you are hearing this sermon in the sanctuary or watching this sermon by way of internet, like Rolanda Harrison, maybe my sister Yolanda, or maybe Bill and Vanessa in Atlanta, maybe my sister-in-law Brenda, in uh, Houston, Greg and Elaine in Mississippi, uh, 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 Alicia and Bruce, uh, whether you're watching like Sister Hurley in Texas or Dr. Starks in Kentucky, the fact of the matter is all of us at some point in our life have been betrayed. No one gets a pass. G-G, no one is exempt. It happens in our families. Husbands have betrayed wives. Ooh, I heard that old yes back there. Lord have mercy. Uh, wives have betrayed husbands. Parents have betrayed children. Children have betrayed parents. Siblings, hard to believe, siblings have betrayed siblings. Betrayal happens in our families, and betrayal happens in our dating relationships. There's a thin line between love and hate, betrayal. Have you seen her? Tell me, have you seen her? Betrayal. Break up to make up. 
Because that's all we do. First you love me, then you hate me. Tony, that's a game for fools' betrayal. I think I better let it go. It looks like another love. T-K-O. Betrayal. And probably the most popular betrayal song in my lifetime, I grew up in the 70s, and this song was a, a popular song. I think many of us, if not all of us, have sung this one. Everybody, well, y'all know that song, plays the fool sometime. There's no exception to the rule. It may be factual or it may be cruel, but everybody plays the fool. Why is that? Because falling in love is such an easy thing to do. But the fact is, the one you love may not love you. That's why everybody plays the fool sometimes. It happens in families. It happens in relationships. Yes, betrayal happens. And unfortunately, frankly, I'm new, betrayal happens among believers in the church. Heather, a betrayal happens. Uh, Sydney, betrayal happens. A betrayal happens among believers in the, the church. Brothers in Christ betraying other brothers in Christ. Sisters in Christ betraying other sisters in Christ. Preachers betraying preachers. Deacons betraying deacons. Uh, 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 deaconess betraying deaconess. Choir members, Lord have mercy. Don't let me talk about the choir betraying other choir members. That leads to church splits. That leads to division among the body of Christ. All because of betrayal. Therefore, here in Romans chapter 12, Paul the preacher, Paul the church planner, uh, uh, Paul the apostle, Paul the pastor, Dr. Mark, after seeing how betrayal had affected and in many cases had destroyed relationships in the church. People were real close at one time, don't even speak to each other in the church. People at one time were prayer partners, don't even talk to each other anymore in the church. People at one time were the best of friends, uh, don't even want to associate with others in the church. So here Paul the preacher, Paul the church planner, Paul the apostle, Paul the pastor, after seeing how betrayal had affected and in many cases destroyed relationships in the family and in the church, Paul addresses this issue with the members of the church at Rome as I'm trying to address this same issue with the members of the church at Franklin Avenue. And Paul's main point to all of us as Christians, Paul's main point to all of us as believers is that when it comes to betrayal or any other attack of the enemy, whether it's being lied on, being cheated on, being talked about, being mistreated, Paul said because of your relationship with God, you have been adopted into the family. Because of your relationship with Jesus Christ, you're born again because of his death, that he shared on the cross. Uh, 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 but because of your relationship with the Spirit of God who fills you and lives within you and controls you and directs you, that God expects those of us who are saved, God expects those of us who are born again, God expects those of us who are Christians, that God expects those of us who are saved with sons and daughters of God to respond differently from folk in the world. Can I get about 20 honest people to say amen? Because of your relationship with God, because of your relationship with Jesus Christ, because you say you're filled with the Spirit of God, God expects those of us who are saved, those of us, Anthony, who are born again, those of us who are Christians, Caldwell, those of us who are sons and daughters of God, to respond differently from folk in the world. Therefore, our behavior as Christians should be based on sacred scripture, not secular songs. Our behavior as Christians should be based on sacred scripture, not secular songs. One of the D1's favorite songs I love so much was uh, his song, uh, I'm Not Perfect, even though I'm a Christian. Yeah, yes, I'm a Christian, but I'm not perfect. Because all of us have to realize 
betrayal happens to all of us. Just because you're a Christian, that means that doesn't mean you do everything right or, or see everything right or, or act the way, Brother Wilkins, the way that God wants that. Our behavior as Christians should be based on sacred scripture, not secular songs. Our, our behavior as Christians should be based on what the Savior says, not what society says. Therefore, on last week, we talked about four things that believers should not do. Four things that all of us were done, done in the body of Christ should not do if we intend to overcome betrayal. Four things, I'm going to just recap them real quickly. If you want to overcome betrayal as a believer, as a son of God, as a daughter of God, as a, as a preacher, as a deacon, rather, he said, Paul told us last week, four things you should not do, but class is bargain. Number one, he said, do not repay. He says, do not repay. He said, repay no one, verse 17, evil for evil. Do not repay evil for evil because all we're doing is hurting ourselves. Why? Because we're all a part of the body. So if I'm hurting you and you're hurting me, guess what? We're hurting the body of Christ. So Paul told that do not, this is David's repay. Secondly, then he told us, well, secondly, we should not do, do not react. Verse 18, do not react. Uh, do not react. If it's possible, as much as it depends on you, live peacefully with all men. Listen, Satan will assign people to upset you. You must understand and realize, Satan will assign people to upset you. All we are doing is understanding that Satan will assign people to upset you. The devil will assign people to make you angry. Therefore, do not allow people to press that button that the devil, oh, that gets you mad? Press that button. That gets you upset? Oh, that makes you cuss? Press that button right there. Do not react. Therefore, do not allow people to press those buttons that makes you react in an ungodly way. The third thing that we found out last week of what we should not do to overcome betrayal, do not repay, do not react. Number three, do not retaliate. Do not retaliate. Verse 19 through 20 says, vengeance belongs to the Lord. That God, God say, listen, vengeance is mine, I will repay. So he tells us, Sister Johnson, he tells us, Quinn, uh, uh, do not retaliate. Why? Because vengeance, Sister Sabarbia, uh, belongs to the Lord. Turn that person over to the Lord and let the Lord fight your battle. And then there's the fourth thing we talked about last week that you and I as believers should not do as a, a Christian. And overcome, do not repay, do not react. Do not retaliate, and this was number four, do not reflect. Do not reflect. But George, he says in verse 21, stop reflecting on the evil that was done to you. So stop reflecting on the bad things that that person did to you. Stop reflecting on your past and concentrate on your future. If you keep rehashing that old hurt, you keep rehashing that old pain, you keep rehashing that old sin, you will never be able to overcome betrayal. So stop reflecting on your past and concentrate on your future. Therefore, on last week in part one, we talked about four things that you should not do when someone betrays you. Today in part two, we want to talk about three things you must do. Last week it was four things you must not do. Today we want to talk about three things you must do if you and I expect to overcome betrayal. Number one, Paul says in the text, you must let good. The causes, then they said, then he said, you must let good. Look at verse 17. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard, here it is, for good things in the sight of all men. Marcus Shari said, you must let good. Now, this is easier said than done. I'd be the first to tell. I told you last week, Lena, I stepped all over my toes last week. Brother Kim, I stepped all over my toes. Uh, Astrid, I stepped all over my toes. I, I stepped, uh, because this is easier said than done. The, it, it, it's, it, it's, the Bible says you must let good. Now, this is easier said than done. However, it's possible to let good over letting evil. If it were not possible, Brother Sertan, God would not have put it in the Bible. Everything God puts in the Bible for us as believers is something, Sister Barbara, is something, Sister Cheryl, that we can do. And he says in the text, have regard for good things in the sight of all men. 
It's easier said than done. However, it's possible to let good over letting evil. No matter how much the person has hurt you, no matter how much the person has disappointed you, no matter how much the person has betrayed you, the word of God says, have regard for good things in the sight of all men. Listen, because of the Jesus in you, all God is saying, repay no one evil for evil. Because of the God in you, because of the Spirit in you, pay no one evil, but let good over letting evil. And we have examples of that all throughout the Bible. That's what Joseph did in Genesis chapter 45. Joseph repaired good for evil after his brother sold him into slavery, yet he provided for them when he was over authority in Pharaoh's garment. He repaired good for evil. That's what David did in 1 Samuel chapter 24. David, 1 Samuel chapter 24, David repaired good for evil after Saul became jealous of David because David spared Saul was like when he had a chance to kill him. David could have taken him out, but he didn't repay evil for evil. He repaired good for evil. That's what Stephen did in Acts chapter 7. Stephen repaired good for evil by praying for those who was about to throw stones to kill him. That's what Jesus did on Calvary in Luke chapter 22 as he hung on Calvary, nails in his hands and nails in his feet, a spear in his side, crown of thorns uh, on his head. Uh, but yet the first cry Jesus cried from the cross was not, Daddy, kill him. Was not, Daddy, take him out. Was, Daddy, make them suffer. No, the first cry that Jesus cried from the cross, when thinking about his enemy, Jesus cried out, Father, Forgive them. Hey, can shield them, for they know not what they do. And like man of my brothers and my sisters, in order to have the victory over your enemies, you must have regard for good things. Now, that does not mean that you hang out with them. That does not mean that you have to sit on the same row with them. Remember, y'all used to sit on the same row at one time. But now she's sitting over there and you way over there. To repay good for does not mean that you have to uh, hang out with them. Does not mean that you sit on the same row with them. That does not mean you have to pray with them. Yes, pray for them, but you don't have to pray with them. All God is saying you got to get to a point in your life as a believer that you return good for evil. Therefore, if, if, if it's your desire to have the victory over someone who has betrayed you, you must let good. You must let good. And the only way to let good is you must change your mentality. You must change your thinking. You must change your attitude. You must change your way of thinking. Paul tells in Philippians 4 and 8, he tells us uh, 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 how to let good. He said, finally, brother, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is any praiseworthy. Meditate on these things. Think on these things. In other words, you must let good. But then there's a second thing you must do in order to overcome betrayal. Not only you must let good, but the second thing, says Gladys, Paul tells us in the text, you must let go. But the moon, the moon not only must we let good, but, but, but secondly, we must Greg, we must, Mary, we must let go. Verse 18 says, if it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peacefully with all men. He's saying, but he's saying you must let go. Listen, the problem for many of us when dealing with overcoming betrayal is we can't let it go. The problem that we still, Gene, gets upset and get angry and uh, our blood pressure rises when we see that person walking in the church, when we see that person singing in the prayer, when we see that person. The problem with many of us uh, overcome betrayal is we can't let go. And you'll say to yourself, well, I ain't changing churches. I came here first. They need to go to another church. You, you, you got to get to the point where you let go. We, we, the problem with many of us dealing with overcoming betrayal, we can't let go. We can't put it behind us. We can't move on. We can't push forward. I know it hurt. I know it's painful. But brother, sisters, you must let go. And the main reason that many of us cannot let go is because, here it is, listen to it well, put on your iron toe shoes. We cannot forgive. 
The reason that many of us cannot let go, but Nelson, is that we cannot forgive. Listen, you cannot let good if you cannot forgive. And you certainly cannot let go if you cannot forgive. And myself, uh, Paul is not saying that it's easy. I'm not saying that it's easy. I, still, I got my steel toe shoes on this morning. <laughs> I'm not saying that it's easy. That's why he says what he says in verse 18. My wife Elizabeth was leaving out this morning. She said, why you got on those shoes? I didn't tell her I got steel toes on these shoes. It's not easy. But you got to do it. You, 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 you got to let it go. Uh, it's not, notice the Bible says, notice the scripture says, notice what the word of God says in verse 18. If it is, what? If it is possible. If it is possible. If it is possible. Because God understand, Brother LeBron, tell me, God understand that Agnes, God understand that there are some people it's difficult to forgive. You know, they've hurt you, they've let you down, they've, they've betrayed you, they've lied about you, they, they've talked about you, they've said unfair things about you. So, so that's why the Bible says, uh, 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 if it is possible, even in the church, you expect it in the world. You expect it in a fraternity. You expect it in a sorority. You expect it out in society. But Paul is talking to the people in the church, and Paul is saying, if it is possible, as much as depends uh, on you, Paul is saying you got to live peacefully with all men. Now, notice Reverend Patterson. Now, notice, uh, uh, in order to let go has nothing to do with the person who betrayed you. But check out the text. In order to let go, it has nothing to do with the person who has betrayed you. The Bible says, the scripture says, the word of God says, read it for yourself. As much as depends on you. If it is possible to let go betrayal, he says, as much as Brother, Ray, Brother Reese, Brother Michael Pittman, he says, as much as it depends on you. In other words, the person who betrayed you may never say, I'm sorry. The person who betrayed you may never say, I'm sorry. The person who hurt you may never say, I'm sorry I hurt at you. The person who betrayed you may never say, I'm sorry I disappointed you. The person who betrayed you may never say, I'm sorry I lied on you. The person that betrayed you may never say, I'm sorry I cheated on you. The person who betrayed you may never say, I'm sorry I let you down. The person who betrayed you may never say, I'm sorry I betrayed you. They may never, ever, ever say it. However, if you're going to be able to let go, you must be able to forgive. If you are going to be able to let go, you must be able to, regardless of what they do or don't do, regardless of what they say or don't say, if you expect to overcome betrayal and have the freedom that God wants you to have, to be able to worship freely, to be able to sing freely, to be able to preach freely, to be able to go on life freely, you must let go. You must remember you must be able to forgive. You must remember your forgiveness has nothing to do with how the other person responds. As a matter of fact, they walk around like nothing happened. They walk around like nothing happened. However, if you are going to let go, it has everything to do with how you and how I respond. Because the forgiveness is not for the other person. You got to understand that. The, 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 the forgiveness is not for the other person. The forgiveness is for you. Rock is not for the other person. 
They may never say, I'm sorry. They may never say, forgive me. They may never acknowledge that they hurt you, that they betrayed you. Therefore, forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for you. You need to move on. You need to be healed. You need to be delivered. You need to be set free. Now, the reason you should be able to forgive someone else is because it should not take long for you to look back and remember. It should not take long for you to look back and realize that God forgave you. The reason you should be able to forgive, I know it hurts, I know it's disappointing, but the reason you should, because you should be at some point look back and remember, look back and realize that God forgave you. That's why Ephesians 4, 31, 32 says, let all bitterness let all wrath, let all anger, let all clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all matter. Verse 32 says this, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. Here it is, even as God in Christ forgave you. Whoa. Ephesians 4.32, be kind to one another. Just like last week, kill them with kindness. Wave at them if they don't wave at you. Smile at them if they don't smile at you. Greet them if they, yeah, yeah. Kill them with kindness. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. In other words, if God forgave you and me with all of our issues, and some of y'all know y'all have some issues. Some of y'all know you still have. <laughs> but if God forgave you with all your issues, God forgave you with all your hang-ups, if God forgave you with all your mistakes, if God forgave you with all your baggage, if God forgave you with all your faults, if God forgave you with all your strongholds, then it should not be a problem for you and me to forgive someone else. Can I have about 50 honest people to say amen? I'll be the first one to say it's not easy. But we're talking about what God expects of believers. Particularly when you realize that the forgiveness is not for the other. If you don't hear anything I got to say this morning, please, please get this point. The forgiveness is not for the person that did you wrong. The forgiveness is not for the person that let you down. The forgiveness is not for the other person. If we expect to let go, we must realize that the forgiveness is for us. If you intend to overcome betrayal, that's one more thing you must do. Number one, you must let good. Number two, you must let go. And then finally, we must let God. We must let go, good. We must let go. And we must let God. Look at verses 19 through 21. Beloved, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. You must let good, you must let go, and you must let God. Let God. You ever tried to give up a habit on your own? Don't raise your hand. You ever tried to give up an addiction on your own? Please don't raise your hand. You ever tried to give up smoking on your own? You ever tried to give up cussing on your own? Brothers and sisters, you ever tried to give up lusting on your own? You ever tried to give up gambling on your own? You ever tried to forgive someone who betrayed you on your own? Let me give you a, listen, it's not possible. You can't do it by yourself. You can't do it on, if that's the case, God would have never given Jesus Christ to die on the cross. If God thought we can do those things by ourselves, if God thought that we could do it, Jesus would have never died on the cross. But God 
God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God sent this son into the world to forgive us for our sins. It's not possible to do it on your own because self always gets in the way. But then one day, you read a scripture. I see that has to quit. Then one day you heard a gospel song that the choir of praise team was singing. Then one day you heard a sermon, maybe not from me, but from other preachers, you heard a sermon. One day you, you, the, the Spirit of God began dealing with your heart about the issues, about the baggage, about the strongholds, about the difficult things in your life. And it was then you decided that today is the day that I'm going to let go and let God. No more devil, no more using me, no more abusing me, no more trying. Today is the day I'm going to let go and let God. And that day, maybe it was a Sunday, maybe it was a Wednesday night, maybe it was in service, maybe it was at a revival, maybe it was listening at a preacher on the TV or on the radio, but that day you decided with tears coming down your eyes, that's it. I've had enough. Today is the day that I'm going to let go and let God. And when you decided to do that, some of y'all remember, when you decided to do that, some of y'all remember something amazing happened in your life, something astonishing happened in your life, something astounding happened in your life, something awesome happened in your life because you heard the Spirit of God say to you, I got this. You heard God say to you, Hank, I got this. You heard God say to you, give it to me. I got this. And the reason I got this, because I got you. And you were able to let go and let God. Because Mark God said, how did God say, I got this. Let me handle it. Let me handle him. Let me handle her. Let me handle them. I got this because I got you. Don't worry about vengeance. God says, I got this. Don't worry about getting the enemy back. God says, I got this. Don't worry about getting even. God says, I got this. Don't worry about payback. God says, I got this. Don't worry about retaliation. God says, I got this. You just do your part. And God said, let me handle your betrayal. You do what you're supposed to do, and I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. In other words, let go and let God. Let good and let God. Let go and let God. You stand still. You hold your peace. And let the Lord fight your battle. Let the Lord fight for you. Let the Lord intercede for you. And I promise you, your enemy will be baffled. Your enemy will be blown away. Therefore, turn the table on your betrayer and let God. Kill them with kindness and let God. Turn the other cheek and let God go the extra mile and let God and you will baffle your enemy you will literally mess with their mind uh, they'll be blown away and it's all because you decided to do it God's way you decided to let good you decided to let go and you decided to let God 